Hey everyone, welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. Hope you guys are having a great day. So in this video, I want to kind of talk about what BEM is and how we are using it in a project to basically style our components. So if you don't know what this is, it's basically just a, a, a methodology of naming your HTML elements. Okay, so if you've used HTML, typically you have elements like divs or images and you need to put classes on them so that you can style them. Now the issue with just putting whatever names you want is that when an application gets larger, you're going to have a lot of classes that are duplicated. So if you have like five elements that all have the name container, and then you have like 50 CSS sheets, and all of them are styling the container a little bit differently, it can become really problematic when you're trying to debug an issue on one page, so you change the styling for container, and you end up breaking it on 10 other pages. So that is the, the main goal that BEM is trying to solve, is trying to reduce the chances that you're styles are going to overwrite other styles. And there's a lot of other CSS approaches like um, style components or CSS modules that help address this issue. But BIM is just another one that's been around for a while and a lot of people like to use it. So before I dive into the code base, I wanna just kind of show you this website that will give you a lot more information than I can. Um, so it's a lot more finer detail, it's gonna give you a better overview. I definitely recommend you read through this to try to understand it yourself. And take your time, just go through it, there's no rush. But ultimately this boils down to basically just naming your CSS classes into three parts. So it's one string that has three parts and those three parts happen to be a block, an element, and a modifier. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over to our code here and I wanna show you something that we have set up here. So we have, let me just go ahead and show you. The JSX on the right is a component that we have in our application and it is built up of one main, one main block basically. So if you look here, we have one div that wraps all this other internal stuff, okay? So we have a top level block called main 500 page. And inside of that block, there's a bunch of different smaller elements, okay? So what you need to do in BIM is instead of like in your code directly accessing the H1 here, the idea is that you give specific unique names to the elements that exist inside of that block and style those directly. So instead of, again, accessing H1, you wanna add a class of main 500 page underscore underscore banner, and then you just style that here like we are doing like this. <clears throat> so this is basically what you do with BIM, okay? So you make a block, everything that's inside that block that you need to specifically style, you make it, you give it like another class and append a underscore underscore element string to it. And that's basically it. And it can get kind of more complicated. Like you can have blocks that are nested inside of blocks. So if I wanted to like make, make another block here, I can, there's nothing wrong with that. So I could say like, I don't know, card. And then the card could have like a card body. This could have a card header. So notice again, I just made another block and that block has elements inside of that. Um, one thing that would be good to talk about is the modifiers. So typically if you have something that you want to change very slightly, like let's say you wanted a card, but you want it to be like a large card or a small card or a medium card. I think we do this with buttons. What you want to do is you want to make a class that follows that same convention. So you do card, but then you need to make sure that you do like hyphen hyphen and apply the modifier. So in this case, I could say like large, I could do hyphen hyphen medium or small, something like that. Now, if you wanted to do a modifier on the element itself, you could do the same thing. I could do hyphen hyphen small. I could do hyphen hyphen like uh, condense. Whatever you do, like a modifier is just something small that you add to a class to make it different from something else. And again, like the small, medium, large is a great example. Like if I go to the button class, there are some BIM modifiers here. So we have button main, we have button sub, we have button outline. Uh, I don't know if this, this doesn't look like proper BIM. We have to go through and fix some of this stuff, but like here's the example I'm talking about. We have button hyphen hyphen SM. So that's like a small button, a button medium, button large. So that is basically what you do with a modifier. But basically BIM just boils down to make a block, give it a unique name that's not used anywhere else in your application. And then any element inside that you need to actually specifically style, just start appending underscore underscore an element name. Okay, something that reflects what you're doing. Like this H1 is a banner. Um, that's just like, you know, a top level banner of a page. You can see down here, we have like a underscore underscore title. We have like an underscore underscore info, stuff like that. And you might be looking at this and be like, dude, this is like so much extra 
writing of styling just so that we can like style something simple and it really is but the main reason for that is that it helps your application be able to scale as you have more developers adding code as you have more and more pages you need a way to make sure that you're not overriding people's styles and you have a consistent way of naming things love it or hate it it does have its benefits and it's one of the things that you just need to learn to love if you haven't used it before and you start to realize how it actually helps you um, down the road. Again, I would highly recommend just reading through this. I mean, it seems like it's a lot to read in, um, but really how I summarized it could help you start hitting the ground running with this documentation. I think it's important to kind of understand this stuff and I need to read through it myself, honestly, when I find some more time just to make sure I have a deeper understanding of how you can do this. There's one thing I want to learn about is like mix-ins. So basically, instead of adding padding, like one of the rules is you're not supposed to add padding or margin to the blocks itself you should be adding like a modifier or a mix where basically you can say header underscore underscore search form. And this is what you want to apply some type of styles to. It's like a combination of your higher level block mixed with your internal nested block or your child block. And then this is what you kind of want to add your margin or padding to. And this what, what this allows you to do is you can easily take this block and like move it around in your code and not have to worry about it being styled correctly. The styling comes from like an external class. Okay, so that's more advanced, but just keep that in mind. And they also talk about how you can like use a particular file structure for BIM. I don't think we're actually following this exactly. So I think ultimately if you just follow the naming convention, there's also a BIM validator. So what I would do if, if you were kind of unsure if, if you're doing this correctly, go to this website, just type in like BIM online validation and take your CSS, whatever page you're working on, and just paste it in there. And it'll tell you if you're doing anything wrong, right? So this, this all checks out. This BIM looks good. But if I were to be trying to target like an image tag directly, notice that it's going to complain and say this isn't proper BIM. And it'll give you a reason as to why. I think you should be able to hover over this. Yeah, so it'll tell you what's wrong with this. Um, basically, it's saying that you shouldn't be targeting like nested components in this fashion. You should be actually applying like an element to it so instead of doing whatever banner space image you should probably do like a banner hyphen image okay so this should probably be called like banner hyphen image if you wanted to particularly style that to make it proper bim and again just keep in mind there are two underscores here there's double double underscore and double double hyphen your modifier that's really important i know in our code base there's like places where we're doing this like all wrong <laughs> let me see if i can find some so I did go through a lot of these files for this project and tried to just fix up the BIM to make it proper. Um, but I think there's a couple of places where we're still not doing this correctly. I have to figure out where that is. I think it's on the settings page. Let me type this one in. So here's an example of one of our pages that have like a ton of messed up BIM validation rules. So in, the, in this case, using the caret, that's not proper BIM. Um, what else are we doing wrong? Obviously targeting nested like this. This is improper BIM. Yeah, there's just some... A little bit of issues in our project that we're trying to fix up but just keep that in mind like i don't think we're trying to be too strict on this but the longer you let this go unmanaged it's going to become really hard to manage your styles as people are just randomly styling things um and when the application gets larger you're going to run into weird css issues that are really hard to debug that could have been prevented if you just followed bim to begin with all right i hope this was a good overview a quick five to ten minute overview of bim how you can use it and what you want to use it for and why you want to use it. Um, if there's anything that I left out, be sure to leave a comment below. If you want me to dive deeper into the docs and maybe explain some more things, I can do that for you all. I, again, I'm not an expert in it. There's stuff that I want to kind of learn about it as well. Um, but yeah, keep that in mind. And then also give me a thumbs up if you like this video because it helps my channel grow. And like always, if you're new to this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button and bell icon because I'm going to be publishing videos like this in the future that should hopefully help you become a better web developer. All right. Have a good day and happy coding.